In the future, when I remember my time of playing at Calhoun, I won't remember the score of the MacArthur game. Heck, I probably won't even remember the game. I won't remember the big wins. I won't remember the tough losses, but I'll remember the memories that I made with my brothers for life. During our off season, uh, I was trying to get guys downstairs to lift, get stronger for the season, and I thought it would be a good idea to come up with a, a team shirt. Every team's goal is to go far into the playoffs and getting to Hofstra. And to make it a Hofstra, you have to make it past the first round of the playoffs. Even though we worked hard every year, we always fall short. Just said it's all about the Colts, and it had a horseshoe on it. And the coach then surprised us when the shirts came in with the back of the t-shirt saying 11, 10, 17, get ready. And everyone was asking what's 11, 10, 17, and then coach told us it was Hofstra. It was a big deal, then we had something to start striving for. We made the shirt knowing the journey in front of us and all the hard work that we would have to put in, all the time, all the sacrifices. Everyone had to be in on the goal. It couldn't just be the seniors who it's their last year and want to go out with the bang. It couldn't just be the juniors who have all the talent and are rising up. We deserve to be picked eighth from last year's season because it was an okay season and it was just that. We went in with the eighth seed knowing the challenges and struggles we'd had in front of us, but we knew that we'd play every team the same. We'd be relentless, that was a common goal, relentless. It just means that you just gotta keep on going. When you're down, when you're getting hit, when you're getting beat up, you just gotta get, pick yourself up. And swarm and punish. Swarm and punish was uh, an idea that our coaches came out with. And I like it because it's time that Calhoun came back into saying, you know, we can kick some ass. We don't have to be the ones taking it all the time. We're not a perennial football program, but the number one thing that we can do is believe and have heart. And I take heart over anything else. You're playing for the guy next to you, not yourself. And you know that the guy next to you has your back and you have his. I mean, I think that's what Calhoun football is all about. It would just be a foolish thing to overlook any opponent. If this was any other team last year or any other team years before, you know, you'd play a team like that and you'd look past them. You'd look to the other games and you'd have that kind of cockiness and selfishness. Something that Coach Moeller kept saying all year was that we would play at a high level. And no matter what, no matter who we were playing, we always played at our highest intensity. came out 100 miles per hour and we wanted everybody to know that doesn't matter what team they are, what seed they are, we're Can coming after all of them the same. Can you give me your back? Yes, Let's go, bring it Let's in. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Let's go. Playing against Mepham is probably the most fun game we're gonna play all year. Every inter-district rival, those games really matter in your heart. Every game matters, but those games, you know, you grew up with those kids and They've been your rivals since middle school. You want to beat teams in your town. You want to have that superiority over them. We know Mepham to be this very good team. It's always a tough game for Calhoun, especially because we haven't been that good at securing the victory in the past. That week was hectic. No social media. I put my phone down. I didn't even want to look at the stuff that was going on. The kids in the hallways telling you, like, are you guys going to finally put up a fight against Mepham?
I did get a bit emotional after, you know, it was upsetting to lose, especially being up at half and then coming out and losing 24 to 20. It was probably one of the best games ever played by a Calhoun team. I think we all knew what we really could do. We set a tone to the rest of the conference that Calhoun's no joke anymore, that when you play Calhoun, you better, you better take us serious. I told the guys right afterwards, we don't really lose, we just learn. So we learned from our mistakes in that game and how we could improve for the upcoming games that really were even more important in order for us to secure a spot in the playoffs. We are bright our season. It is a bright season we're going to have because Carrie doesn't know what's going to happen next week. After another close loss to one of the carry players who was talking, he was congratulating us that you were a good team. It was nice to hear, but it also pissed me off. I thought I'd have to kind of get the team in check and make sure everyone was on the same page, but you know, this is why I love my brothers here, because no one was thinking, oh, that's the season, or was feeling bad, oh, are we, we going to lose the next game? We all had that desire to bounce back and to win. So we knew that if we really wanted to have a good, successful season, we would have to play even harder. And we played hard in those two games, Mepham and Carey. But we knew if, if we really wanted it, that every day of practice would not be a joke. We couldn't waste a single moment, because it would be a moment that the other teams were not wasting. So we had to take the edge on that. And it brought us together even more, because it showed that we all really wanted it badly. If we worked together, we all believed that we could accomplish great things. and two. This is kind of like a clean slate after those two losses. This is how we bounce back from adversity and we have the rest of the season to show how we can start making a turning point towards the right direction. We just knew that in order to make the playoffs, those next three games were must wins and we had some pretty tough opponents coming up after that. First we had Duet Park, which was our homecoming. Homecoming is you're playing a game not for yourself, but for those who've put on the jersey before you and for your team, for your school, for your community. Everybody comes out. It's one of the biggest turnouts of the year. It was significant for us because of all the hard work and all the losses and the tough things we've been through as a team, not just this year, but in the past, knowing the disrespect we get and the lack of respect we have around the school and around the community because it's like, oh, you know, football sucks that we knew no matter how many people were in the stands, that it didn't matter. It mattered how many of us were on the sideline. It was those guys that we looked to for encouragement and we looked to ourselves. We know that we were the ones who cared about each other and we were the ones that were gonna have this victory and it would all been about us.
Enjoy this moment with your family. Enjoy this moment with your parents. It's been a long time for them being here for you, all right? They are loving this for you. You think all the way back to playing football. If you played at a young age, like peewee football, or playing in middle school, that it was coming close to the end, and that even though football may be going away, you still have your brothers and you still have your family there with you at all times. I remember being a freshman and coming back from our JV game to see the homecoming game and to see the football players walk out with their parents and it was sad and I thought, you know, I, ha I have time before that comes and comes for me until I have to do that. When I was standing there on the line ready to walk out with my mom and my dad, I realized how much this football season didn't just mean to us as players but to our families because we put so many sacrifices in but our parents put even more for us to play this sport and they know how much it means to me and how much it means to the team. Playing MacArthur, we knew it was going to be a tough game all the way from the beginning of the season. They're a very good team, seeded third. MacArthur on paper was better than us. So we knew if we won that it would, it would shake up everything in Nassau County. All these other opinions about our game against them, they chose MacArthur. How many times I've heard people saying, oh, like, it's okay, you'll get the next game. People thinking that we're going to lose already. And we said, screw that. We're gonna do this for ourselves because we know what we can do. It didn't mean just a lot to us, but a lot to the program, a lot to the coaches, and we knew that the outcome of this game would mean the outcome of the season. That's the great thing about football, is a Friday night game under the lights. Everyone's turning out. It was their pink out event. I remember that day in school thinking about what you're gonna do at night, like how the game's gonna go. We are the people in control of our own playoff picture. And they're in our way. That team out there is in our way. We are gonna go at them. We're gonna go over them, we're gonna go through them, we're gonna go on top of them, we're gonna go beneath them, and they don't have a chance if we play as good as we can. We play tough, relentless football together. Let's go! All the captains brought us together 
and we just knew that we had to do something about this. We were thinking that if we were going to lose this game, that would have been our season. We wouldn't be able to make playoffs after that, or it'd be like an eight seed. First time, not only in my football career, but in my life that as soon as the game was over that I cried with tears of joy. You know, like I've never been so happy that I began to cry. And it was not just me, it was multiple people on the team. You know, we were all just that happy that we were able to have that experience and walk away with a victory. We battled our asses off. We were up against it, we made big plays. Defensively, we made huge stops in the second half. Guys, by far! The biggest win in the past decade at Calhoun. And when they saw that we beat MacArthur, everybody knew that Calhoun was no joke, that we won a big game that we weren't supposed to win. We all realized the amount of work that we put in paid off, and this is the things that Calhoun football can do. And that the whole season we knew what we can do, but during the MacArthur game it really showed our true colors. So after the MacArthur game, obviously, the confidence was very high. But we knew right away Southside chose us for their homecoming. That pissed us off a lot because it reminded us last year, Herricks made us their homecoming. And we shut them out at their own homecoming. And to make someone your homecoming means that you don't really respect them. You think it's an easy win in the books, something that the fans can get excited for, but you know that you're going to win in the end. took that happiness and that excitement from them and I was happy to make sure that they would remember that their last homecoming game ever for those seniors was a loss to Calhoun. It was just another improvement, another milestone, another step up in our season as a team, as a family. Our defense has always been the backbone of the team and the offense, we had the game plan but there was always mistakes here and there. We weren't executing but in that back end of the season, and we had that momentum going with us, it was because the offense stepped up. We probably had one of the best running backs, I'd say, on Long Island. I'd say he's one of the best running backs on Long Island. It was just both sides of football coming together. It wasn't just the defense working, or it wasn't just the offense working. It was our team working together, both O and D, and that's what really made us win those games. Going against MacArthur again at their place week nine for the first round of the playoffs, because we know we can beat them and everybody believed it because it had happened. But we had to go even harder. Playing the same way we played against them the first time we did wasn't gonna be enough. We have to play exceptional. That we have to play at a level above ourselves because they were gonna come in hot and they were gonna come in looking for revenge against us. But we knew that MacArthur was the only thing standing in our way from achieving our goal that we set over a year ago. And we knew that nobody, nobody was gonna take the hard work and the goal that we set for ourselves from us.
going into the fourth, and we all were thinking that no way that this is going to be the last time we're playing with your brothers. I want another Monday practice to go tackle those stupid practice wheels with you guys again. I couldn't believe it. Something like that just happened because not of luck, we earned it. Matt went in there, grabbed that ball, stripped him because we held the kid up and it was everybody, everybody was around the pile and it was momentum changing. finally did it like we've been dreaming about going to Hofstra ever since we've been, I don't know, I've been dreaming about going to Hofstra since I knew what Hofstra was about football. Every single one of us worked for it over the summer from trying to get stronger or from running stairs and just hanging out as a team to get a stronger bond. It all paid off. The first thing I did after I hugged all my brothers was I ran to the stands and I called my mom over and I broke down in her arms because she knew how important this game was to us and how every day I told her that, you know, we're gonna make it. And she was just telling me to be careful and she knew that I'd do anything for them. And I think that's what scared her because she knew that if it meant me getting hurt, I'd do it without a heartbeat because I love those guys. And my mom loved those guys also and she knew how important this was to us. And I was just proud that I didn't let my team down. So, I'm sure all of you today, you got congratulations for people and all that stuff. And probably about six or seven times, I got, oh, congratulations, you know, it was a great game, you know, good job, you know, biggest one for Calhoun. Who do you guys got next? Garden City. Oh, well, at least you guys gave it your all. Or, who do you guys got next? Garden City. Oh, uh, well, it was, you know, you had a good run. You know, it was the best team so far. Oh, Garden City? Oh, that sucks for you guys. Dean is definitely, he's a leader, and he knows... He knows how to rally the team. He knows how to get everyone confident. He set the tone. He said, guys, no matter what happens, this could be the last time you're playing with the person next to you. I wanted to make it known to the team that Garden City is nothing more special than we are, that they are a beatable team. You have to believe it. If you don't believe it, it's not going to happen. We knew that that had to be the first step if we wanted to win this game. It made me realize that this was it, that now it's do or die. You play every game the same. To be a great football player and to be a great football team, because everyone in that room knew that if they were the person that was scared or the person that thought that, yeah, there's no way we're going to win against them, that they were the person letting the rest of the team down because they needed everybody on the team to believe. And that's what carried us through the whole season. One, two, three, I believe! Walking into the stadium, my adrenaline was just pumping because. There was just no feeling like going into Hofstra and playing there. It's a once in a lifetime experience. I was just looking around and I was like, if you would have asked me four years ago if I ever thought that I would get to this point and play there, I'd think you're crazy. It was such a satisfaction that came over us because we were the first team to win a playoff game to get here. We all took it in that we did something special. <laughs> to play in November. We lifted last year, February, March, April, May, June, to get here today to do what we have to do as a team, as a group, as a unit of young men dedicated to a common cause, a common cause that we all sacrifice for. Don't forget the sacrifice because it's what makes it special. It's what makes it holy. It's what makes it a part of us. It's because we gave up other things, other fun things to do, so we could do this together as a group, as a unit, because it's not 
about me, and it's not about him, and it's not about her. It's about us. Play. Go out and play. You've done it all year. There's nothing different about today. Just play. Play with your friends. Make memories today. You're the first team to earn a trip to Hofstra by winning a game. Today we're going to be the first team that beats Garden City. Let's go! <laughs>
football, counting Colts meant everything for me. It was a place where I went where I could escape from my problems or uh, somewhere that I knew that would look after me and would treat me as their own. I want to be remembered as a selfless leader. I'm nothing without them, and that's how it is. From day one, we were brothers, and we knew that. And that was the most important thing, and that we set a goal, and we stopped at nothing to achieve it. Even though the season's over, we have the memories, and because we're such a tight-knit group of guys, that we can share those now and 20 years from now, that we'll always be able to remember what we did and the great things that we accomplished and the tough things we persevered through, that we'll always have those memories and we'll always be a brotherhood. Uh,